Okay, we're rolling. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. Hold on. I'll be here. Okay, so I'm continuing with my series of things I did not intend to talk about. Uh, so trying to get to other things I really wanted to do, more class stuff. But since I got this thing going on the, the little block, weighted block, uh, all this falls into uh, when you're working in product photography uh, that you end up having to style a photograph, which means you have to set things up and style it on the table you're going to be photographing. Um, to do that, you a lot of times end up needing a lot of different goodies to get things to position right and to hang the way you want it to. Um, saw somebody did a video on a kit that they had for doing um, styling clothing. And that's another specialty area uh, to, to work in. Uh, so I kind of pulled out uh, a lot of things I've been using through the years uh, to kind of uh, show some examples of things to have around. So when you're having to go through to start uh, styling a photograph, and again, this is going to come from an art director's sketch or um, the worst ones where you get a client's sketch because they really don't understand how photography works. And a lot of times they want to change the laws of physics, which that's a Photoshop job. That's not in actually taking the photograph. Uh, with most of the stuff I do, I try to get as much done in the camera as possible because it's usually the more affordable place to do things. Uh, so if we can get it done in the camera and not have to do a lot of Photoshop work later, it's going to be the more affordable photograph for a client. So you get a drawing or you get an idea, uh, you got some product to work with, and you got to get the things all in position to work with. And so uh, through the years, I've found different things that I've just, some things I just kind of keep in a bin, other ones I got sitting around the studio everywhere. So I thought I'd run down through uh, some of the items that I've found useful over time. Um, one of the ones, especially in working with the jewelry, is uh, tacky wax. And uh, this stuff, uh, it's kind of like a beeswax, but it's, it's more sticky. And it's nice because it'll, you can use small amounts to get things, or you can actually use large amounts to get things to stand up and, and do things. Because it's a wax, you can clean it off of things later on, uh, either just with some warm water or just wiping it off. And that's one problem if you got something the client's providing and they want it back in the same condition that they came in because they want to sell it. Uh, you gotta, some of these things aren't going to be appropriate for that. But the old tacky wax, um, again, I bought this about 40 years ago. Haven't used much, but you usually end up just using small amounts so you can reuse it. So that's always been been very helpful to stick something in place. Uh, of course, I do a lot of jewelry photographs, so it's great to get earrings and, and rings and things to stand up. And that's been my, my secret for doing that. Uh, other items that come in handy literally are... Tinker toys. <laughs> I've used tinker toys for uh, forming any kind of holder thing where I need to drape stuff, hold it up. There's a lot of ways you, you know, as kids you play with making things out of tinker toys. You end up making things out of tinker toys in the studio to get things to stand in place uh, to support items. To go along with that are dupo blocks or these are Dupo blocks. I know there's the, the other ones out there. Uh, but any of these kind of, I, I know I've kind of looked online and so they got all kind of different things in this category now. But they work, at, like in this case, I just need to make a quick background holder for a small product. I can just stick that on the back real quick and uh, have something that's going to hold up. Uh, a lot of ways you can, you can use these also to support things. Um, the key thing with a lot of this stuff ends up coming down to one of the uh, sticky things to hold stuff together. And this literally is held together in my studio. It used to be clay tack. I can't seem to find clay tack anymore. They probably 
did away with it for some, like these are non-toxic, they're probably toxic. And I know they, they used to, if you left it on something for a long time, they did leave an oil stain mark. Um, there's a variety of these kind of things out there now. And it's a, it's a wonderful little stuff that just kind of molds and sticks to anything. Um, they use them now for hanging pictures, um, all different varieties. I kind of checked online, so uh, I can't uh, swear to any of them now about how effective they are. They're all kind of in the same general category, so you just have to get some to, to uh, play with. And uh, this stuff was, last stuff I got, I think I got it at uh, uh, Staples, but I don't know if they're carrying it now or not. Uh, so the white stuff was was really nice and sticky. Um, this uh, this is Elmer's uh, tack and stick. Um, it's it's more friendly, but it doesn't uh, stick and hold quite as well. Um, so that allows for setting up all kind of things you can cover. That then things stick to it to hang down. Uh, works in a lot of variety of ways. So Tinker Toys are good. Um, Lego Duplo blocks are good. And then also uh, building blocks. Uh, years ago, this stuff would go on sale at Toys R Us, which is gone now and uh, on sale and it get really dirt cheap. Uh, and all these little things can help to go through to, to uh, then brace or hold something. Um, hopefully I'll find some photo uh, around. I can kind of hopefully drop in some examples here. But uh, these guys aren't, they aren't the heavy, they aren't the heavy weights. But when you need lighter stuff or some other ways to work with things, those are all the good support structure things you can, you can build stuff to hold uh, a book up or to hold a, um, a bowl up or something uh, to support, or do you want to stack some levels of different things? Uh, stuff like that will, will work for that. Um, the clay tack stuff helps hold it all together. At times you can also get into where you need to hold stuff together in another fashion, and that's where this is actual gaffer's tape, and it is really sticky stuff. Um, I got this stuff years ago and found it was like over sticky. So a lot of times I just end up using, um, this is kind of a black duct tape. So a lot of times just, you know, duct tape holds together everything. Other times you're gonna need something that's gonna hold but not leave any marks. And sometimes just masking tape is as good as you're gonna get for, for working with that. Also, work with uh, very refined uh, black electrical tape for holding stuff together. And you can also get it in a white and in other colors. Um, this can also do well if you're working with transparent things, if you need to go through and put a white behind it so it's just not seen through a very small object. Um, stuff like that can work very nicely. So all your, all your different uh, Kind of tapes can get in on used on things. Uh, I usually got a light. These are back when you used to actually do architectural work by hand and use your drawings and stuff. Have a drawing board and you'd be doing erasing or something and you need a light brush. And so uh, something like this works really nice to go through to to brush off the dust and things on a on a, a set. Uh, when it gets real small, you gotta use little fine paint paint brushes to work with those. And sometimes paint brushes with very long handles works, works well with that. So the brushes in my, in my kit, um, for hanging things, um, I got various sizes of strings and twines. This is for when I'm having to support something really large. But most of the time, what works real well is just um, the monofilament uh, fish line. And uh, like this is just a six pound and it practically disappears against some backgrounds. It's also, if it doesn't disappear, really quick to Photoshop out. So that you can go ahead and, and, then, and then hang something uh, with the fish line and uh, it just you know, disappears later. Uh, so they worked real well. Uh, very early days, 
uh, we were using titanium wire, and that was when they were uh, holding really heavy objects, uh, and they were, the stuff was black. It would go against a, a black background to cut out. Now with, with a green screen, um, you could probably get it, uh, paint it in a green or something. Uh, this stuff will stretch, and so it will have some sag to it. Initially, you have to wait for it to uh, kind of relax before it'll stay and hold in place. Uh, with the titanium, it's pretty firm right off the bat. I haven't used that in many years, and I don't even know where to get it or if they have that anymore, but that's that's an item that, that uh, can work uh, for some of the stuff. Um, what else have I got here? So uh, the thicker fish line. Uh, another one is if you're having to hold something up or form around, this is old lead solder. And because it's very malleable, I could, I could uh, put it on or attach it to um, a surface or a block and then be able to uh, move and bend it around on it. And that can be very uh, helpful. Again, it depends on, you know, over the years, you get all kind of different things you have to photograph. Uh, when I got outside of the jewelry areas, I was working with bronzes and, and uh, art glass work. So a lot of different, uh, a lot of different things needed uh, to be formed and shaped and held so it'd be facing toward the camera on it. Uh, I was like, back here, this is some of the, the white sticky stuff, which is good. Um, early on, they looked at using the different glues and they talked about these different craft glues. And I tried them early on and I found that if you're using some of the stuff, it's almost like a, a airplane glue, um, you gotta stick something in place and then you gotta hold it there for a long time for this stuff to dry. And you just don't have time to do that in a studio. Uh, it also doesn't clean off that easy. So I still got these things sitting around, but I really haven't used any of the, um, there's a di number of these different craft glues that are out there. You can go into a craft store and find, find these things. But for a lot of stuff I did, I didn't find it practical to work with any of the, any of the glues, the silicones or the uh, other ones in the, kind of this area. Um, so yeah, it just kind of all goes into a little container box here. I can haul around. Um, usually I've got some cutting things in here like a, a safety raise, razor blade. And um, so I've got some different Velcros. Obviously um, paper clips get into everything. You can both hold stuff. You can also form things. Uh, that kind of goes in with your um, clothes pins and your little clip pins to to uh, hold things in place. So all those things can, can be useful at times. So that's kind of an array of things I just have had uh, around. Um, this is where your imagination like, gets into composition and uh, trying to come up with the message, the big story, but also how do you work to tell that story, the, the things that go on behind it. Uh, it's like 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration to go through and actually get a photo to come about. So I thought I'd just do that as a continuation of uh, information if people are actually having to style photographs these days. Again, I'm from the school where we used to have to do everything in camera. Uh, I was finding as I finished my career up that I was still trying to do as much as I could in camera because I could do it quicker and cheaper then trying to get uh, different components and photograph them and then bring them together into Photoshop. Now, again, there's some jobs that's the only way you can do and it gets into engineering a photograph and how you're gonna, what, what's gonna be done where, part of, uh, of photographic engineering now. Uh, but when I can do it in the camera, set it up on, st on, on the table, and especially if I'm gonna do multiples, then uh, this kind of stuff helps to, to get through on that. So just wanted to pass along a little info and hopefully that's helpful to you and I thank you for watching.